Hello people, how you all doing? Welcome back to another video. And this has kind of been inspired by another YouTuber who looked at my latest Ancestry results and said, hey man, why not check this out? And he made a couple of videos talking about this new site, this My True Ancestry. I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me. Uh, but it's not new to me downloading my files from Ancestry and using it in other sites. I used a site called Jedmatch a few years ago. And that kind of broke down a lot of the prehistoric stuff and it was quite interesting but it was hard to navigate through. Whereas this My True Ancestry, it's, it's quite fun to go through and, and look at. So I'm going to have a look at that with you today guys. So I want to thank Tori Rygreen and he's here. I'll, I'll link his channel in my description. But he's, he's going through my maternal lineage, ancient tribes and linking them to biblical populations. And he finds that he's mostly related to the Visigoths and Skordisky. And the thing is, um, he's basing all this on his family members' DNA and results. If he's so invested in this whole biblical ancestry stuff, he should really get his own DNA tested um, and get it tested in these sites. And then he can get a more direct... Fair enough, you can sort of build up some kind of profile yourself with your mum, your dad, your uncle's blah 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 but you want to really try and get it from the, the source and and this is what I've done I've I've put my ancestry download into this my true ancestry and it's easy guys to get your download from ancestry you just go to the site and on this page here you can see in the top right there's settings you click on the settings you scroll right down and there's actions and there's download PDF and there's a file for a zip and you get a little file and then you can put the file on my true ancestry they ask you for the file you put on there you wait 10 minutes and it's ready so but the thing is i downloaded it yesterday this this thing and um it wasn't my latest because i've got i've had i've had my results updated on ancestry so this is my latest results and i, I put an old uh, zip file into this site and i was curious what my latest results were so I, I, I went back in with a different email and it's the exact same, it's the exact same results. So if you've had updated uh, from Ancestry, you've, your zip file doesn't change. So don't worry if it's an old one, if you've got an old zip file, the Ancestry that you downloaded maybe a few years ago. Don't worry if you've had a few updates since then because you can still use it, it's exactly the same. That's what I found anyway. Anyway, my new update was 64% uh, Ireland, so a good chunk of the Irish went away, which was, it wasn't surprising because 87% was just too high. It was just too high because I know my dad's Irish and I get 50% of that for him, but my mum's side, my granny, my, all that, like, we're all Scottish, again, we, we don't know, again, we don't know any Irish people in our family on that side, so that confused, but this makes more sense. 35% because even if he didn't know any Irish, there might be some Irishness in there somewhere just being Scottish. You know what I mean? So this this makes more sense. It's more even that and the one other region there is that's just the English and North West. Just ignore that. Ignore that. That'll disappear eventually. Anyway, guys, this and it was quite a fun morning. I've been mucking about with this new site, this my true answer. I take all this with a pinch of salt, guy. Don't think I'm I suddenly think I'm special because I found something on these sites. I don't. If you go on these sites, you'll suddenly find that you're special and they'll, they want you to spend some money to find out if you're even more special than you are. Anyway, but we're going to have some fun. We're going to go through the site. It's quite hard to navigate through, actually, but it's easier than the Jedmatch one. So just bear with me if you find me fumbling through the site. But again, I want to thank Tori for sort of pointing me towards this. It's, it's just another... And look at your results. Um, they go more into the why haplogroups, and the the the, the haplogroups are quite important. And the ancestry seem to just uh, they don't really go into the depth. The haplogroups where this site does. So there he is, Tori. Cheers, pal. Right. Without further ado, let's look at the my. So this is my true ancestry. This is a site here. It's got a little Trojan helmet up there, a Spartan helmet or something. And um, you come across this, and it's like, what's this? That's kind of like, is this it? What is this? But once you start clicking, right? Analysis summary: three new civilizations. Let's have a look at that. 
Right, your closest ancient population is a Celt, which wasn't a surprise. You can see here, Tory's results were on screen earlier. Um, I'm a Celt. Four point, and the lower the number, the more closer you are going to be connected to that. So that's four point four. That's really low. I think it's under ten. You're 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 probably a direct descendant. So there's a Celt, there's a Celt Frank, Celt Parisi Frank, Celt Breton, Celt Celtic Parisi, Viking Danish plus Celt, Celtic Parisi Breton Viking Danish Frank. So I'm pretty Celtic. Put it that way. The Franks. I don't know why you read all this stuff for you. You can, you can do this stuff yourself. You probably have Franks in your own. I, I think this is pretty cool. The Celtic tribes. Can how they break this down. They can find certain tribes. That's that's pretty cool. If if it's genuine, the Celtic Britons. So there we go, and the Danish Vikings. Pretty. And, and what's, what's interesting is that Ancestry doesn't really mention that there's any Danish Vikings in me, or Danish Ancestry, but maybe that's through the Scottish. I think Ancestry only goes back a few hundred years, to be honest with you. Right, so that was the ancient populations. Well, you've got this bar at the top here, and you want to go through these, so there's quite a lot once you start going into them. There's quite a lot of... Uh, right, so we're at the ancient samples results. New breakdown. Your full civilization breakdown. So I'm 42.9 Celt. I'm 9.91 Celtic Dobunny. I'm 9.85 Britain. Britain, sorry. 8.98 Viking Danish. 6.24 Saxon. Another Celtic tribe, the Celtic Parisi, 5.97. Frank, 4.32. Pict, 3.44. Celtic. Cantacci, 2.46, Longbard, Visigoth, Vandal, Small, sorry. Um, oh, there's my picture now, yay! I uploaded my picture early and I wasn't there, so there we go. So you can, you can see here there's a breakdown, so the bright green, the luminous green there, that's Celts. Celt de Bunny there, Celt Breton, Danish Viking, Saxon, Celt Parisi, Frank. I'm not sure about the era, breakdown by era. Doesn't really give you any numbers here. Maybe you have to pay some extra cash or something. Or oh, the Roman age. Well, that's pretty cool. Medieval. So the medieval's on the outside of this chart. And I think the earlier it is on the inside. Right, cool. Proto Celt. The Neolithic age. Aye, so I'm, I'm pretty Celtic by the looks of it. So there you go, there's my full civilization breakdown. I'm a Celt, Celtic Dubunit, or a half Celt. Uh, so that was the ancient samples results. So what's the, I, I don't think I've looked at the deep dive results. All right, you have ancient relatives, you share identified DNA segments. So this is um, Iron Age, Chemin, or Chemin de Coupets, Marne, France, 250 BC. And then you can see the the chromosomes you share with us. Your raw DNA is ninety two percent closer than other matching users, and that doesn't mean it just means you're closer related than other users. It doesn't mean you are related. I don't think, but you're closer related. Um, upgrade to king, so you have to pay more money to look at these other ones. Um, I deep dive whatever that is, so. Another section, modern population, so number one, Irish, 5.8, South East English, South West English, West Scottish, North German, Orcadian, North Dutch, Danish. So this list is the closest populations I'm related to, the top being the most. Um, and there's a wee map there. Like I said, you could probably spend a lot more time digging into it, um, so... At the modern population, I think that's right. Try to go back to results. See, sometimes you get a wee bit lost, so bear with me. Like it looks like there's a few bars missing there. Right. 
go back to the analysis. Did I look at everything? I think I looked at everything actually. Right, cool. So that was my ancient populations stuff. Then when it crash the site, you can feel it's it's no, uh, or unless it's my internet, but it feels like it, it, you don't know what to click it too many times. Or something might happen. Everything takes a while to load, and like I said, it might be my internet because I was finding it hard to download the zip file in Ancestry last night, so I had to use an old file, which I was worried it was going to be different for this, but it was the exact same, so don't worry guys, if you've got an old zip file for Ancestry, use that one. Right, so we've looked at the analysis, we can we can sort of skip that one. Um, the maps globes is pretty cool, but we'll just get down to the haplogroups, because this is what Tori was interested in looking at in my side of things. The whole haplogroup stuff. So we'll, we'll we'll jump right to that. Same again. We've got all these options here. So the royal ties globe. So this is apparently connecting your ancestry to royalty around Europe. Your DNA matches ancient samples, which in turn have royal ties via the Y DNA subclades. Discover your potential royal ties. Using the yellow control, your related samples will appear as red or yellow dots. Touch these samples to uncover more. Sample matches red or deep dive yellow. Touch a crown to learn about the royal ancestral home found there. So this is this is pretty cool, I suppose. Um, like I said, it's still hard to navigate. You, you touch things by accident and you zoom away. But um, we'll try to focus. Touch here to start on the map. I'll move it up a wee bit. Right, budgie, hear you. Right, so we've got the Ustrin royalty. So apparently, I'm connected to some Ustrin royalty. The ancestral seat is the Hofburg. Y DNA haplogroups R1B. So there's a clue to what what haplogroup I kind of belong to. So we've got the clan Abercrombie. Their seat is Erthry Castle, and that's their haplogroup there. So if your haplogroup is in here, you're, it doesn't mean you're related to the Amber Crombies, but you're probably in the same gene pool somewhere as them. So there's a Clan Abercrombie, Clan Abernathy, which, <laughs> this is crazy, guys. I was <clears throat> I was there a few weeks ago, Abernathy Round Tower, Ancestral Seat, Abernathy Round t Tower. I was there um, probably about four weeks ago or something like that. Uh, but that's crazy. And it's, I like how their coat of arms is like the, uh, lying rampant with a stroke through it. So there's a there's a haplogroup. group. Anyway, Clan Abernathy, Clan Armstrong, Royal Seat, Ancestral Seat doesn't tell you. But there's a couple of other ones here. We have some match. I have some matches to here. But we'll just focus on the the crowns popping up. Right, Clan Cathcart, Seat Cathcart Castle. There's a haplogroup, R1B, 1A, 1B, 1A, 1A, 2A. Clan Donachy, that's a uh, ancestral seat, Donalister Estate, with R1Bs. Clan Dundas, and I think true Scottish history will like this stuff, because he goes into his clans and all that stuff, so I think that's another viewer who would appreciate this information. Um, Clan Dwyer in Ireland, which isn't a surprise because that's especially Southern Ireland and the Munster region. Clan Dwyer. Clan Erskine. Alloa Tower is an ancestral seat. Clan Hay. Clan Jordan in Ireland. Ballyhan Castle. Clan Murray. Bothwell Castle. Clan Nesbitt, Nesbitt House. Clan Ryan in Southern Ireland again. Castle Waller. Clan Sutherland, away at the top. Clan Sutherland, Dunrobin Castle. Clan Watson. Clan Weir. Stony Byers. So we've got Danish royalty. So they've got the R1B1 I. Oh no, R1B I1. That's their uh, blood. That's their haplogroups. So if you've got 
a connection to that. You might be connected to that. So the Danish royalty, apparently I'm connected to that. English royalty. Down here, English royalty, seat Hampton Court Palace. R1B, R1B, 1A, 1B, A, 1A, G2 at the end. So that's, I've got a wee bit G as well in there. So that's maybe what connects you. It connects me, sorry. French royalty. So we've got the French ancestral seat, Chateau du Saint-Germain on Lay. So the G2A there, the R1B. So it's kind of... It's kind of giving, guys. If you're European, you've got R1B blood, there's a good chance you're connected to royalty. You will be connected to royalty. Somewhere. If you go back far enough. So here's the house of Leapy Detmold. Detmold? Castle Detmold. And this is somewhere in Germany. And Norwegian royalty. R1B. One I. Scottish royalty as well. We kind of forget the Scots. Dundonald Castle. Swedish royalty. And there we go. That's it. So apparently that's all the royal seats my DNA is connected to. Same again, it's fun. I'm not going to start running about saying I'm the king of Britain here, but... Uh, Royal Ties Globe, right? The Haplo Group Globe. So this is quite interesting as well. The Haplo Group Globe. So this is a Y DNA all, empty DNA all, show all matches. So this kind of just shows you where you started, can your your blood, the R one B bloodline, where it, how it spread through Europe. It kind of apparently started there, and spread through. Up into Scotland and away into Iceland. Uh, the YDNA breakdown. So this is probably what Tori wants to see. So I am 79.6 R1B. So that's very high. And looking at Tori's, he, his dad is like 50%. 50 something percent. So And his mum, I think, is like Middle Eastern and... Mediterranean maybe mix, so he might be even less than the 50, um, Tory, if he has a look. So that's what I'm saying, Tory, you need to do it yourself, have a direct look. Anyway, but mind you, my son's, he's he's in the 70% as well, so you, you could probably be in the 70%. I'm, like I said, this is a new science, it's all new to me, and I take it all with a bit of pinch of salt. Anyway, there you go, 79.6 R1B, and then the second... Running second is I, two. Whatever that is. Uh, R1A in the third place. Jai in fourth. G in fifth. I, one in sixth. And E, one B, like, not even a percentage. And touch the wheel to see your marches. So that's my R1, the orange is the R1B. YDNA summary for R1B, Royal Haplo Group, tap for details, tap what for details, don't know, right YDNA, so here we go, we're mostly R1B, we've got some R1A, we've got I2 there, we've got quite a lot of I2 there, that's quite a surprise, the whole I stuff, I didn't realise, uh, but, oh right, that all changes underneath, to show you. Right, so I. So where's the connection here? Deep dive needs king. Huh. Like I said, this is all new to me as well, guys. So, so the R1A connections here. It shows you the. Right. And this is the R1B. So you can check out all these things if you pay more money, I think. But apparently, um, this is what I'm connected to. God knows. Um, the I. That's a strange one. Where does the I come from? 
don't know, it still doesn't tell it just goes on about the R R one B stuff. Anyway, I think we've looked at that enough because like I said, you can end up getting lost and pressing too many buttons and whatever, right? So is that the Y DNA breakdown? Full your full Y DNA breakdown. Right, royalty breakdown. What's this? Right, so like I said, this is more just sort of just loads of symbols. But English royalty is at the top 4.79, Scottish royalty 4.6, Clan Abernathy, which is strange, I was up there a few weeks ago, that's the highest clan I'm connected to, 3.6. Uh, clan Weir, but you can see they're all very low percentages, Clan Donachie, Clan Minas. People say Menzies, but the real way to say that word is Minas in Scotland, it's weird. Uh, clan Ross, House of Leap, Clan Armstrong, Ogilvy, Wemyss. There's Crawford there, I'm sure um, Wallace was for the Crawfords. Spence, Clan McInnes, oh look. So we've got all this stuff. Um, MTNA breakdown. Your full MTDNA breakdown. So I think this is from the mother side. Um, and oh, there's H, H1, K, J, U, T. This is MTNA distribution of all the sap samples which match this kit. So I'm, I'm not sure about this this one. But this is maybe where I get all the sort of Saxon and the Frank and the, all that stuff uh, from a mother side. I think this is the mother side. But like I said, it's it's, it's all new and. I, <clears throat> if anybody's uh, got more knowledge of this site, uh, please or knows somebody that does more knowledge of this stuff, I pass me over. Let's let's have a look. Let's see how they break this then. But, uh, hey, your full MT DNA breakdown, which is sort of more chopped up. And um, because I think it's your your male lines more than it, especially if you're a male, it's easier to go through the Y because you, it's a direct link through your, your male line, but your mother's, it's, it's all over the place kind of thing, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's harder to break down, but it probably is for Haplogroup Explorer, so I'm not sure what this is, U, then J, I, so that's R1B in the middle, that's R, that's me then R, uh, R1B, I so that breaks off. This is me, and then it breaks off in the R1B. Breaks off in the I, so I. Why DNA samples? What's that? See, like new stuff just pops up. Is that loading? Like I said, it's all still pretty new to me, so. I could be doing it wrong here. Why DNA matches? DNA spotlight. This just shows you what connections you might have to certain things. This is a deep dive match. There's no matches with the Roman stuff. Roman tannery. No matches there. Roman gladiators. There's a lot of matches there because they were Celtic. So apparently I've got a lot of connections to Celtic gladiators in York. Um, Ancient Britain. The Cheddar Man. I've got a connection to the Cheddar Man. The Hanseatic League. The King Lee Mystery. I've got a match there. I've got a match to Philip Calvert. That's genetic distance. That's pretty bloody close at 10. Is it Mary's Coffee Ma Coffin Maryland? The Pocklington Chariot. Eight point eight eight point five. Julius Caesar provided vivid accounts of chariot used by the Britons. So the ancient Britain burial. Flocky's expedition, the Viking boats. So aye, ah, it's it's pretty cool and Merovingian nobles. So we've got a match in here, 79% closer. A young Merovingian noble. 
And uh, I think probably that's about it. Did we look at the maps and the globes? Ah, uh, we did, I think. All period. No, we never looked at Neolithic. So in Neolithic times, there's a... Still in Britain, so it kind of looks like my ancestry is in Britain for ever. I'm like a true Aboriginal. Anyway, guys, that's just a quick look. If there's more stuff I find, I'll, I'll make you aware. But thanks to Tori, I'll link his channel uh, below. And true Scottish history, if you're watching this, tell me, you make a video, show me what you've got. And uh, like I say, take it all with a pinch of salt, but it's a bit fun. It, it feels like it's going deeper than Ancestry with the Haplo group stuff. So that's that's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great day, a great Easter weekend. And take it easy. I'll see you all later. Cheers.